here for this. This is really good. I understand the hype. With caramel sauce though on this, then you're really talking. This is solid. This is a solid, solid treat. Would recommend. How do I want to do this? There's no elegant way of eating a cupcake. <sighs> Whatever. Ah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the icing adds to this. Big time. Welcome back to the Dolled Up Desserts Recipe Capsule. My name is Katarina Paletto. I'm so happy that you're here. If it's your first time stumbling upon this series or Dolled Up Desserts in general, welcome. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and the little bell so you can stay up to date with all of our new recipes. Today we're making something that we never ever made when we had the bakery. Today we're making carrot cupcakes. You're wondering, cupcakes? What? Why didn't you make that? Well, we made an amazing, delicious, stupendous, like, super popular carrot cake. It was delicious, but we never made cupcakes. I'm personally not a big fan of making cupcakes, but given the fact that this recipe capsule is supposed to be chronological, I used to make a ton of cupcakes, and cupcakes are super easy for the beginner baker to grasp. Thus, we are making cupcakes. Specifically, we are making carrot cupcakes using our carrot cake recipe, which actually has not changed since 2016. And it is topped off with our cream cheese icing, which is from the previous recipe capsule. Highly recommend you go check that out. So this is how you make gluten-free and vegan carrot cupcakes. Once you've gotten all the ingredients together, you're gonna preheat that oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. You're gonna line your muffin tin with your muffin liners and you're gonna set it aside. Next, you're gonna prepare the flax egg replacement. We do this in our first recipe capsule with the brownies. And all you gotta do is take water and add it to milled flaxseed and stir it up and set it aside. It'll thicken up and become a flaxy goop, which is exactly what we need to act as our binder. While that flaxy goop is dehydrating, you're going to take another large mixing bowl and you're going to prepare your gluten-free flour blend. As much as I would love it for you to use a kitchen scale when you're scaling out the flours for this flour blend, I forgot my kitchen scale when I was coming to film today and so I actually got to test out the exact measurements of all of the cup measures and teaspoon measures that are in the recipe and let me tell you, they work, you know, case in point. They made delicious cupcakes. It wasn't too dry, it wasn't too crumbly. In addition to mixing the flours together, you're gonna throw in all the other dry ingredients, you know, your spices, your baking agents, your xanthan gum, whisk it all together, set it aside. In another mixing bowl, that's going to be attached to your stand mixer, or if you're gonna be using a hand mixer, you're gonna put in all the wet ingredients, including the grated carrot, all the sugars, uh, the granulated sugar, as well as the maple syrup, and you're gonna throw in that flax egg, and you're gonna mix it using the beater attachment until it's combined on a low speed. Now, you don't need to have a fancy stand mixer to do this, you can successfully do this with a hand mixer. When I started the bakery, we actually only had hand mixers. I couldn't afford a stand mixer. I literally would just buy replacements every couple months from Walmart for the cheapest Betty Crocker hand mixers, and they did the job. So you do not need a fancy mixer for this. Once your wet ingredients have mixed together and are homogeneous, you're going to then add in your dry ingredients about one third of the mixture at a time, so you're not spraying the flour everywhere when you turn that mixer back on, and you're going to mix it up until there are no no dry pockets present. You don't want to overmix this. Uh, you can mix it longer than you would a gluten-based dough, but you don't want to overmix it because you can overhydrate and overactivate xanthan gum, which tends to make things sticky and it will lead to your muffin having a sticky bottom and not fully coming out of the cupcake liner. So definitely mix until combined, but you don't need to overmix this at all. Uh, when you're ready and your batter looks nice and delicious, make sure you taste test that. I always recommend taste testing because you can tell if you've missed an ingredient and or you can taste it so you can train your tongue to try different gluten-free flours and understand how gluten-free flours taste before it's baked and after it's baked. If you're interested in actually becoming a better gluten-free or vegan baker, I highly recommend you do this and training your tongue is a really great way to improve those sensory skills. You're going to then use a muffin scoop or a spoon or ice cream scoop, whatever works for you, and you're going to evenly portion that batter into the cupcake liners and you're going to bake it for approximately 20 to 22 minutes, basically until the tops are cracked, a little bit golden brown, and when you touch the top, it is hard to the touch and not jiggly underneath. You're gonna let those cool completely in the pan or not, you could also choose to eat them uh, like I did. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's got a nice crumb, holds up well, not too crumbly, 
it's a little crumbly it is gluten free um but that's good you wouldn't want it to be gummy and like a puck definitely not too sweet like i'd even say it's like not sweet at all uh so this you could arguably if you didn't put icing on it easily make this as cake for breakfast like my banana muffins which we did in recipe capsule four mm, yeah this is very much cake for breakfast material put some sunflower seeds on it mix in some cranberries I'll actually be sharing that recipe at another point or morning glory muffins, which is made with this, but I digress. Plus, if you don't put any icing on it, it's technically soy free and this is not free. So this could actually be free of all the top eight allergens, which is pretty cool. You can then prepare your cream cheese icing, go back to the previous recipe capsule to get that recipe. And then you can take that icing and pipe it on top in any which sh way, shape or form that your heart desires. It's really up to you. If you like a lot of icing, go to town. If you like one layer of icing, that's good for you. You can also not pipe it and just use an offset spatula or a knife and just slap it on there. Really, it's up to you. I like it fancy. You don't have to be fancy. This is your baked good. You can also top this cupcake with whatever you want. I always like topping it with toasted coconut or caramel sauce. Sprinkles also work, chocolate chips, sunflower seeds. Uh, I didn't have any of those things at the time, so they're also just really pretty when they're plain, like this. So these cupcakes can be stored on the counter for 24 hours, uh, preferably in an airtight container, but since it's got the icing, you're gonna to wanna to stick those in the fridge um, in an airtight container, preferably, but if on a, f a plate, it's totally fine. They're good in the fridge for about three to four days before they start drying out. And then you can also freeze them for up to a month and a half to two months. Let's try it with the icing. So I'm peeling off the wrapper. Wrapper's coming off really nice. Uh, cupcake's not falling apart in my hands. It's not sticking to the bottom. This is a quality cupcake right here. The icing, if I were to tip it over, doesn't fall off the cupcake. So it's nice and attached. Sometimes when they're too oily or they're made with pure shortening, uh, the icing will fall off the cupcake. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the icing adds to this big time. It's like this buttery melt in your mouth, sweetness with a little bit of salt, a little bit of tang. This kind of rounds out the more dry texture of the cake, obviously, compared to the icing, it's drier, guys. Um, and the fact that the cake's not very sweet, but the icing is very sweet. It's really quite balanced, not overwhelming. I'm here for this, this is really good. Really, really good. I understand the hype. Well, I understood the hype before when this carrot cake was there. With caramel sauce though on this, then you're really talking. And you've got a good combination, but even plain on its own, you know, just as a treat, you wouldn't want to put in too much effort. This is solid. This is a solid, solid treat. Would recommend.